Welcome back. This is Greg with SportsRehabExpert.com. Today we have a cool topic for you. This is all about BFR cuffs, which cuffs you should look to invest in, which cuffs are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Do you need to break the bank when looking at blood flow restriction training? Now before we get into the cuffs themselves, you need to have a little bit of a background information on what BFR training or blood flow restriction training is to know why it might be useful for you. The biggest thing to understand here, this is not going to be an in-depth video by any means on what blood flow restriction training is. You can do some more research behind that. We might make a video in the future that goes into the actual mechanisms behind blood flow restriction training. So if that's something that you'd like to see, be sure to drop that in the comments below. But in the general sense, what blood flow restriction training is, is a restriction of the venous blood flow going back to the heart. Now, it is important to understand it's restriction, not occlusion, because we are not occluding any blood flow. You should always have a pulse when you're doing blood flow restriction training. And you should have never have any numbness and tingling as you're performing blood flow restriction training. Now what this blood flow restriction does is it creates a metabolic environment that is very anabolic or increases the amount of hormones readily available for growth of tissue to occur, such as growth hormone. Again, we're not going to go too in depth into this, that could be a whole another video in and of itself, but realize all that you're doing with blood flow restric restriction training is, is creating a metabolic environment for more muscle growth to occur with very little mechanical resistance required. And that's the key to blood flow restriction training is you can do a light resistance activity and create a similar outcome of muscle hypertrophy with using less loads. Now, if we're talking about actually building strength, I, I personally believe that mechanical resistance is absolutely necessary to build true strength. Um, and mechanical resistance is number one, first and foremost, what you should strive for. And it's also going to make us a more resilient human being because, let's face it, life is mechanical uh, resistance. Anytime we try to do any type of physical activity, that is a mechanical stressor to the body that our body needs to be prepared for. So if you're just stressing the body in a metabolic fashion, which is through BFR, then you're not making your body as resilient as it should be or could be through actually applying mechanical load through the form of resistance training and exercise training. Where blood flow restriction training becomes useful is if someone's in pain and can't necessarily tolerate those heavy loads, then we can get a similar uh, strength training benefit from blood flow restriction training as we would from heavy resistance training with a lighter load. And then again, as the person develops more resiliency, their tissue starts to heal and adapt over time, then we can go back to that mechanical resistance, which is going to lead to a lot better outcomes long term and a lot more resiliency long term. So we, we always still have to go back to mechanical resistance. But for someone in, who's in pain, using blood flow restriction training at lighter loads allows us to get a similar response to heavy resistance training. The other scenario that it becomes very useful for is if you're trying to keep volume high, which volume high is a way of uh, increasing hypertrophy or size or muscle growth to keep the hypertrophy gains going. So again, it may allow you to increase the volume of training whether that's in the form of the weight room or potentially whether that's in the form of maintaining strength through a sporting season um, when an athlete is in season and applying a lot of load uh, to their body through the form of you know practices and games. So again, there's, there's, there's different avenues that blood flow restriction training can be beneficial for you, uh, both if you're in pain, both if you're trying to put on size or just keep yourself feeling a little bit more fresh while maintaining some strength that you do have during in season when you don't necessarily want to be beating your up, beating up your body quite as much with mechanical load. Now, whether you're in season or off season or just general life preparedness, uh, you still need that mechanical load. So this does not mean that it should take away from heavy strength training and building resiliency through loading tissues. It's just saying this can be use, a, a useful adjunct. I think too often blood flow restriction training is framed as this fountain of youth or this better than anything else type of resistance training um, and people take it way too far where they think they need to do every single session with blood flow restriction training or that now all their exercises are blood flow restriction training and they never get to any type of uh, actual true 
mechanical resistance training. And, and if you're doing that, you're missing the boat for the water. This VFR training is a useful device for somebody who has some training experience already under their belt. Um, somebody who has no training experience, I definitely wouldn't start with VFR training um, because again, mechanical load and mechanical tension to the tissue is always going to reign supreme. This isn't some magical device that's going to make you look like The Rock or Mark Wahlberg. Um, you still got to put in the work. Okay, so now that we got that rant out of, the, out of the way, how do we start introducing it as part of our training? Um, what's the easiest way to do so? You'll see a lot of fancy blood flow restriction training equipment out in the market. Probably the fanciest piece of equipment is the Owens Recovery Science uh, Unit. This is a uh, cuff that will auto-regulate the amount of pressure. Now, obviously, as you contract a muscle, there's going to be more pressure that is uh, accumulated within the tissue and in the cuff that is surrounding um, your arm or your leg. Now, because of the different forms of contraction you're going to experience, depending on the portion of the lift, concentric or eccentric, there's going to be a different amount of pressure that the cuff will read out as. And what the Owens Recovery Science Unit does is it auto-regulates that pressure as you go along with the exercise so you keep the pressure consistent. And again, you're making sure that you don't occlude anything, which is the most important aspect of this training from a safety perspective. Now, this is definitely a high-end unit. And only those who are certified through the Owens Recovery Science have access to these units. Um, you know, I, I personally feel that we don't necessarily need to get that specific. And you'll notice this in the research. The research from blood flow restriction training, BFR training has been going on for hundreds of years. It actually started back with a, a group that called it Katsu Training. Uh, and so there's actually a ton of research already out on BFR training. You just have to know where to look. Um, and when Katsu training first started, which again is also BFR training, it's restrictive training, it's me metabolic training through restricting venous return, much of that research only used pressure ranges uh, in the research, meaning uh, they picked one pressure of the cuff and it differed depending on upper and lower body and they stuck with that pressure for all their clients for all their exercises and they did not necessarily standardize it individually they standardized it across the whole spectrum of people that they were treating in that study and they still had great outcomes so it just shows you the fact that you don't need to get necessarily this specific with it it is a nice safety mechanism to have that device but again if you're being mindful of having a pulse during the activity and no numbness and tingling you're probably going to be all right but Another form of extra safety precaution that you can take with it is using a Doppler. Um, and a Doppler will just, again, check the pulse. Um, but again, you can mechanically check the pulse yourself too um, when performing these exercises. It's a little bit harder on the lower extremity, but there is a pedal pulse in the foot that you can check. Um, then the upper extremity, the upper extremity is very easy. Most people are uh, adapt and used to checking a pulse in the upper extremity. Um, but again, this Doppler is, a, again, a way to add more specificity to it. Is that extra specificity needed? From a safety precautionary measure, possibly, um, especially if you're getting into individuals who have a lot of comorbidities and taking some different blood thinner medications and, and things of that nature or have uh, blood pressure issues in general, then maybe that specificity is needed in a clinical setting. For, but for somebody who is relatively healthy, again, check with your doctor. This, this video is not liable for any decisions you make as an individual. You should always consult with a trusted healthcare provider. But for the majority of people, um, who are who are healthy and have no comorbidities or issues, if you just are smart with the cuff and check for uh, a pulse, likely you're going to be okay. But again, tr check with a trusted healthcare provider and, and let a trusted healthcare provider who knows what they're doing with this actually show you how to apply it, where to place the cuffs, what exercises are good to be doing with the cuff. We'll go into a few in this video if you stay to the end and how it should be applied to your specific scenario, which is perhaps the most important thing is the specificity of how you apply this to the goals that you're trying to achieve. And again, a consult with a trusted healthcare provider or with us virtually online can be helpful for that too. So do I think the fancy Owens Recovery Science uh, cuff is necessary? No. Uh, if you're if you're in the rehab if you're in the rehabilitation clinic and dealing with a lot of people who have comorbidities, then it does make sense. Um, or at least getting a Doppler does make sense. If you're dealing with generally healthy people, if 
if you are in general a healthy individual, then again, I don't think you need to go through that expense and that specificity in a lot of these uh, middle of the road type cuffs um, will do, which just uses a pressure gauge. Now, depending on the cuff that you buy, there are better pressure gauges than others. Um, I'm just going to speak to the ones that I've used in the past. Um, so some ones with good pressure gauges that give a good, uh, a good readout to them are a B strong cuff, an H plus cuff, a smart tools cuff. This is getting a little bit more expensive or the one that we're going to show in the video with the exercises, a recover fun cuff. Some other things to consider with these cuffs uh, is the size, depending on your size. If you're just an average body type, the recover fun cuff makes sense. Uh, if you have a very, if you're a power lifter or someone who has very large thighs, uh, usually this, this makes a difference for the, the lower extremity more so than others. You might need to take a measurement and make sure that uh, the cuff will fit you. Uh, the Recover Fun cuff will fit a lot of different sizes um, and is very easily adjustable to upper body and lower body, meaning you only need one or two cuffs um, at a time. Um, so you can put them on both limbs, um, upper body or lower body. It's kind of interchangeable, which is again why I like the Recover Fun cuff. It means you don't have to buy four different cuffs, four different sizes. Uh, different sizes for upper body and lower body, um, which for other cuffs, such as the B Strong cuff, um, you're going to have to get very specific in the sizes that you want because they come in different sizes. The general build of the, Re the Recover Fun cuff is, is very durable as well too. It has a nice Velcro strap that locks into it and another strap that goes around it, which is which goes around it vertically, which makes it nice for if you if you do have skinnier limbs and you need to wrap the cuff a few times to keep uh, the cuff nice and snug against you. What you'll notice with some other versions, such as the occlusion cuff, is that you know once you wrap it around once, there's no good way of holding that in uh, tightly. So there'll be a little bit of shifting that goes onto the cuff, which doesn't allow for a very snug fit to the skin. Now, lastly, you'll notice that the Recover Fun. Um, cuff is a little bit wider than the B-Strong cuff. Uh, there's narrow cuffs that are out there uh, and I used to be a fan of the narrow cuffs because it, what, you'll, what you'll notice is the narrow cuff is, is actually harder to occlude, um, which again from a safety perspective is, is nice. Uh, you want it to be hard to occlude because we don't want to occlude. We want to just restrict the blood flow. But in order to still get the amount of restriction in the desired kind of meta metabolic effect in that actual pump that you'll get from doing blood flow restriction training. A wider cuff is a lot easier to create that sensation with less pressure. So sometimes the high amount of pressure that you have to utilize with the smaller diameter of the cuff can become uncomfortable, uh, especially in the upper body um, where it, it will kind of pinch the tissue together. And in the lower body, it, it actually feels like in some instance, those individuals who are very muscular, uh, it actually feels pretty darn hard to get the same type of pump um, that is desirable with a bigger cuff. Because again, with the bigger cuff, you have more surface area to create that restriction, meaning you're not gonna have to utilize as much pressure with the cuff, which again, oftentimes makes it more comfortable for the user to perform. But again, you need to do a little bit more due diligence to make sure that you do have a pulse and you're just restricting the blood flow and you're not occluding it, as well as making sure that there is no numbness and tingling as you do the exercise. Okay, so in summary, if you're a clinician um, who's working with a lot of individuals who have comorbidities, it probably makes sense to get uh, the Owens Recovery Science or the Smart Tools uh, version. Those are kind of the two or higher end versions. Um, the Owens Recovery Science, again, uh, that has an automatic, uh, it's an automatic device that auto-regulates the pressure. The Smart Tools does not auto-regulate the pressure um, unless they've developed a new one that I'm not aware of. Um, th this one is just a standard pressure, but they utilize a Doppler. So again, it might also make sense for you as a clinician to go with a cheaper version such as the Recover Fun and just purchase off of Amazon a Doppler so that you can uh, get, get specificity in your readouts. If you're just dealing with healthy individuals in general who don't have a lot of comorbidities, you probably don't actually need the Doppler. You just need to go with these standardized pressure readouts 
um, and, and stick to what's in the research as well as what's recommended in these guides that come with these cuffs. Recover Fun gives you a guide, um, so just stick with that guide. Stick with a consistent pressure and don't think that more pressure is better um, because again, we, we don't want to get into the range of any type of occlusion occurring. It, it should always stay restrictive. And again, just to emphasize the fact that it does not replace mechanical tension or mechanical loading or heavy resistance training, we still need to do that. Uh, BFR training is just a useful adjunct for individuals who are in pain, trying to add a bit more volume without always having to load heavy to keep the body feeling a little bit more fresh, a little bit more ready to go, um, which it, for a lot of people who are just going for aesthetic purposes, without creating a mechanical overload scenario that might lead to a tendinopathy or pain or just general excessive soreness.